A rare glimpse these days of the Prime Minister enjoying the job. Though best not to mention the word robot. Theresa May came to this Cape Town school today to show Britain and Africa are dancing in harmony again. But amid the fun, she still couldn't get away from her problems on the home continent, Europe. Post-Brexit, she wants Britain to become a much bigger investor in Africa, whose economy is set to double in the 15 years to 2030. That, she said, would also involve a fundamental change in Britain's overseas aid policy to work in the national interest. We will continue our commitment to spend 0.7% of gross national income on official development assistance. And we will not falter in our work to deliver the sustainable development goals. But I am also unashamed about the need to ensure that our aid programme works for the UK. So today I'm committing that our development spending will not only combat extreme poverty, but at the same time tackle global challenges and support our own national interest. This will ensure that our investment in aid benefits us all and is fully aligned with our wider national security priorities. I'm committed to Africa, she said, but isn't she a bit late to the party? I mean, this is the first trip that could be described as a tour by a British Prime Minister for seven years. President Macron has been nine times and visited 11 countries. Your last Africa minister was only in the job for less than seven months. Haven't you and your government and the previous government rather neglected Africa and you're now desperately trying to catch up? Uh, no, Michael, and I think you can just look at the number of visits that the uh, former Foreign Secretary made just last year to uh, Africa as an example of that. We have been working with, uh, with African uh, nations, with African governments in the past. What I'm talking about today is a new partnership for the future, recognising the challenges that we both face. It's lovely, lovely yeah, weather yeah. in Cape Town. Her host, President Ramaphosa, was grateful Mrs May had brought rain to Cape Town after a dreadful drought. No, thank you for your welcome. And thank thank you. you for bringing the rain. <laughs> <laughs> and he made clear he doesn't want no deal on Brexit, but instead... They should conclude these negotiations in a manner that restores stability to economic and financial markets, and secures jobs, not only in the UK, but also uh, in our own country, as their exit also has an impact on our economy. And they hailed Britain's first post-Brexit trade deal, involving several states in Southern Africa, who will now continue to have with Britain the trade arrangements they currently have with the EU as a whole. But the minister who signed the deal on the Southern African state's behalf told us it wasn't really about extending trade, but preserving it in the event of no deal. What we can do for ourselves is to ensure that we have the right agreement in place should there be no deal. Uh, we are just preparing ourselves whatever the, the outcome is. Uh, if there is a deal, then it's fine, our EPA uh, stands. But if there is no deal, we are preparing ourselves for that as well. All day, Theresa May has been paying tribute to South Africa's former president, Nelson Mandela. And tonight, she went to Robben Island, where Mandela spent many of the 27 years he was jailed under the apartheid regime. On that trip to Robben Island, Mrs May was allowed into Nelson Mandela's cell, a rare privilege for a foreign visitor, a sign of the good relations right now. Theresa May doesn't give many broadcast interviews compared with her predecessors as Prime Minister. And when she does, they're off and on foreign trips like this one. And there was plenty to ask her about today. Brexit, of course, the prospect of no deal, the growing rift between her and the Chancellor over the seriousness of no deal, particularly following the Chancellor's letter last week, suggesting it would be very serious economically and financially. Also an issue that's come up in the last few days, the prospect of former UKIP members joining the Conservative Party in large numbers to turn the Brexit debate their way and possibly replace Mrs May with Boris Johnson or Jacob Rees-Mogg. But I began my interview earlier this afternoon 
by raising the Robin Island trip and the whole question of Nelson Mandela. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader's record on apartheid, is well known. He was even arrested once outside South Africa House. But I asked Mrs May what her record was. Mrs May, you're about to visit Robben Island. You were active in politics in the 70s and 80s. What did you do to help release Man Nelson Mandela? Well, I think what is important is what the United Kingdom did. And no, no, what other. did you do? What did you do? Did, did you go on protests? Did you get arrested outside the embassy? Did you boycott South African goods? Did you do anything? I think you know full well that I didn't go on protests, Michael. But what is important is the work that the United Kingdom... Well, did you boycott Kingdom, South African the work, goods? The work that the United Kingdom government did to ensure that it was able to give support where that support but Hang was on a moment. At that stage, Mrs Thatcher, the... Mrs Thatcher believed that Nelson Mandela was a terrorist. Were you a loyal Conservative Party member? Did you think the same thing? What was important was the support that the UK government was giving at the time, often support behind the scenes, uh, but in, in other ways too. But, but to not Theresa May. We saw, to ensure that we saw the result that we did in relation to the ending of apartheid here in South Africa. A government led important? by a woman who thought that Nelson Mandela was a terrorist. Now you're going to be going to Robin Island. Aren't you going to be feeling guilty that at the time Nelson Mandela was on Robin Island, you, Theresa May, did nothing to help his release, you personally? What I, what I will be feeling, I think, when I go to Robin Island, uh, is to recognise the immense statementship, statesmanship of a man who spent so many years incarcerated and when he came out of that incarceration had that breadth of vision and that calm approach that has enabled South Africa to be built into the country that it is today. A country with which we, the United Kingdom, have long historical links, but for obvious reasons, but also for which we, with which we can forge a new partnership for the future. Now, you seem to be at loggerheads with your Chancellor over this whole question of no deal. You seem to think that no deal isn't a huge problem. He clearly thinks it is a problem, that it will affect the public finances by 80 billion a year. How can you remain in the same government when you are so divided on this issue? Well, let's just look at the uh, position that the director of the World Trade Organization took on the relation of no, uh, issue of no deal. What he said was it wouldn't be a walk in the park, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. But clearly the what Chancellor thinks so otherwise. What we are doing as a government is ensuring that whatever the outcome of these negotiations, we make a success of leaving the European Union. Now, we are preparing for the possibility of no deal because we don't know what the outcome of the negotiations will be. Do you agree with the Treasury doing, forecast? What we are also doing is working hard for a good deal. We've put forward a proposal for our future relationship with Europe uh, in the Chequers Plan and the White Paper. That proposal is one that protects jobs and livelihoods, that delivers on the Brexit vote, that maintains the United Kingdom and ensures no hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. Do you trust the Treasury forecast? There was forecasts in January. The Chancellor said la suggested last week they could be even worse once they're revised. Do you trust those forecasts? The forecasts that were produced in January were at the time explained as a, as a work in progress. And, and, and indeed they could get worse. What we are doing as a government is ensuring that we're sitting down and conducting the negotiations. We've put forward our proposals for a deal. I believe a good deal for the UK, but also a good deal for the European Union as well. It delivers on the Brexit vote, it maintains, it protects jobs and livelihoods, it maintains the United Kingdom, and it ensures we have no hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. But it's entirely right that we make preparations for no deal, because we don't know what the outcome of the negotiations will be. What we will be doing as a government is ensuring that whatever the outcome is, we make a success of leaving the EU. Being here in South Africa, my trip to Africa, uh, part of that is about looking to the trade relationships we can forge in the future. Relationships that will not only bring jobs here to Africa, but jobs to the UK as well. Now, the question of UKIP members joining the Conservative Party. Would you welcome it if tens of thousands of UKIP members joined the Conservative Party? 
what we are doing as a Conservative Party, and as political parties always do, is looking to ensure that we increase and encourage... Well, that would be a good way, wouldn't it? Get all the UKIP members we to join seen, the party. We have seen over the past year, you know, since the beginning of this year, uh, people joining... Well, what about UKIP members joining the Conservative Party? Would you have any problem with that if they joined in their tens of thousands? I mean, you, you, you wouldn't let Aaron Banks in last week, but what about all the other tens of thousands? Well, there was a very good reason in relation to Aaron Banks' membership. He had actively campaigned... Well, so had Craig McKinley. He, he was leader of the party. He's now one of your MPs. Please. George Eustace used to be a, a UK, was a UKIP candidate. You let them in. Why not let all the thousands of UKIP members who might want to join the Conservative Party join? Aaron Banks had actively campaigned against the Conservative Party. So had we Craig are, McKinley are, and, and so, uh, George Eustace. What we are doing as a Conservative Party is what all political parties do, which is ensuring that we get our message out to people, that we encourage people to join the Conservative Party. And we've seen people joining the Conservative Party throughout this year. But what we're doing as a Conservative Party in government is ensuring that we are delivering on the vote of the British people, delivering Brexit, leaving the European Union on the 29th of March 2019, delivering Brexit in a way that protects jobs and livelihoods, that ensures that we have an end to free movement, that protects uh, the United Kingdom. But are UKIP members welcome? Are they welcome in your party? I Why can't you answer that? Why? Yes or no? Well, what I... Well, there are some people who have a different view from the Conservative Party. Well, they, 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 well the UKIP policy is about the same these days. No, what we want in the, Conserv uh, in the Conservative Party, we are people who are happy to sign up to the ideals and principles of the Conservative Party. What the Conservative Party has put forward in government on Brexit is a proposal which protects jobs and livelihoods, which delivers on the vote of the British people, which ensures no hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland, and which ensures that we bring an end to free movement and an end to the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. That's what people voted for. That's what this government is delivering.